Hello, everyone. My name is Reagan Sellers. I was selected by the Vanderbilt Ingram Cancer Center to partake in an undergraduate research program this summer called the Vanderbilt Excellence in Cancer Research, Education and Leadership Program, the Excel. I am so excited to be presenting to you all. Over the past 10 weeks, I have been working with Dr. Hal and her team on the Inherited Cancer Registry. I care with the goal of ending the cycle of inherited cancer through research, education, and engagement. Dr. Powell founded iCare in the summer of 2010 at the Moffitt Cancer Center in Tampa, Florida. Since then, iCare has been moved to Vanderbilt University Medical Center in March of 2017. iCare has over 6,700 participants located in all 50 states, the District of Columbia, and 28 other countries. Here you can see how widespread eye care is with this world map view. We have our participants in blue and our providers who recruit patients to eye care in yellow. Eye care participants are recruited by referrals from healthcare providers across the United States and beyond. Providers refer patients by online enrollment cards, prepaid recruitment postcards, and online referral forms. Here you can see our online enrollment card as well as our recruitment postcard. Participants are also recruited through self-referrals that directly take place online through the eye care website. Once someone has decided that they would like to participate in eye care, they will complete an informed consent form to enroll into the study. Next, participants complete a medical records release form and tissue tumor release form. And then finally, participants complete an initial questionnaire and also have the option to complete a family history questionnaire at a later date. For participants who meet certain criteria, we may go on to obtain a tumor specimen from a prior cancer diagnosis or obtain a saliva sample for DNA extraction. And every two years, we do send out invites to our participants to complete a follow-up questionnaire, all of which are optional. There is no cost to participate in eye care, and all of the materials can be completed either online or on paper, so no travel is required. Participants can complete materials on their own and in the comfort of their own home. For our participants and providers, we do provide a number of education and engagement opportunities. One of the things that we do is we publish an eye care newsletter twice a year that is available in both English and Spanish. The content includes guideline updates, cancer prevention and treatment advances, an Ask the Expert Q&A, community spotlight, and any open inherited cancer research studies we may have. All past and recent newsletters are available on the eye care website, inheritedcancer.net. One of the features of our newsletter is guideline updates. In the United States, the National Comprehensive Cancer Network publishes evidence-based guidelines that outline recommended gene-specific and cancer-specific cancer risk management strategies, such as screening and risk-reducing surgery recommendations. And as research evolves, so do these guidelines, and the newsletter allows us to summarize the most relevant and important updates in an easy-to-digest manner, as these guidelines can be upwards of 200 pages long. We also inform readers how they can access these guidelines for themselves. For referring providers, we host a monthly hour-long web-based genetic case conference with guest experts presenting on a focused topic. Providers may present cases for discussion and feedback from experts across the world. Here are some past conferences that feature experts. All educational webinars and case conference recordings are available on our YouTube at Inherited Cancer. Eye Care is present on many social media platforms, including Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, and as mentioned, YouTube. On the Eye Care social media platform, Forms, we post a wide range of engaging and educational information, including talks available, eye care newsletters, any open studies, educational stories, research updates, and guideline updates. Eye care also has a website, inheritedcancer.net, where you can find current and prior newsletters, publications, resources, etc. There is a searchable function for newsletter articles and social media posts. Just recently, we have started to host interactive patient forums. These are online events open to the public centered around a specific inherited cancer related topic accompanied by a panel of experts. Panelists will typically prepare a short presentation or talk followed by an interactive Q&A session. Our first patient forum was held back in July with a focus on coping with inherited cancer. There were a total of 66 participants and 17 question and answer responses. Our next patient forum will take place in October and will focus on inherited breast cancers in men. 
As I mentioned earlier, the Inherited Cancer Registry has over 6,700 participants, and of those participants, 3,811 are carriers of a germline pathogenic, likely pathogenic variant in one or more inherited cancer genes. Here you can see the six major groups of inherited cancer genes, and of those genes, the number of participants that have a mutation in those genes. Here in this graph, you can see that since 2010, the Inherited Cancer Registry has grown exponentially in both participants and providers. We expect there to be a continuation of growth in the coming years. Here I have summarized some of our participant demographics and referral sources. As you can see, most participants are referred through their provider, but there are also quite a few that find out about eye care through a genetic testing lab, as well as FORCE, which is an advocacy organization. Over half of our participants have been diagnosed with cancer. A large majority are female, white, and non-Hispanic. Eye care has enabled the research team to conduct original research. One of our studies includes the IMPACT study, which stands for Improving Care After Inherited Cancer Testing. IMPACT is a clinical trial testing web-based intervention aimed to improve cancer risk management and family communication of genetic test results. Participants are recruited through eye care in two state cancer registries, Tennessee and Florida. Eye care is also working on a breast cancer tumor genomic study using the tissue tumor release form and medical records. We use these forms to identify and obtain breast cancer specimens from those who are carriers of a BRCA1, BRCA2, PALB2, CHECK2, or ATM gene mutation. DNA and RNA are extracted from these tumor specimens and sent for sequencing. This allows us to study the pathways of tumor development. Understanding how a tumor forms is important in helping scientists develop targeted therapies or personalized treatment because not every cancer is the same and not everyone responds to the same kind of treatment. Knowing the pathway for BRCA1, BRCA2 mutant breast cancer development has allowed researchers to develop targeted treatment for these specific cancers, for example, PARP inhibitors. Eye care is successful because it employs a multimodal strategy to maintain ongoing engagement with both our participants and providers. Our approaches have resulted in exponential growth, allowing for the contribution of de-identified data to national and international efforts. The established infrastructure has allowed the eye care team to conduct innovative research on inherited cancers. In the future, we plan to continue to grow the registry and interface with participants and providers through existing engagement efforts. We also plan to explore additional avenues for engagement, such as the previously mentioned patient forums focused on hereditary cancer. And finally, to continue to include eye care participants in focused research efforts. We would love for everyone to connect with eye care by visiting our website at inheritedcancer.net and our social media platforms at Inherited Cancer. I would like to thank the Vanderbilt Ingram Cancer Center for providing the space and resources to complete this research. I would also like to express my gratitude to Dr. Powell and her team for their mentorship and to Dr. Dahlman and Dr. Friedman for the opportunity to experience such an exceptional program. Thank you.